With Gary dealt with, our heroes have a dragon to take on. Let's hope it's not too too much for them. So stupid. <laughs> D and D minus. <laughs> So at the end of last episode, Gary said, don't kill me and I'll make you cool stuff, right? Yeah. Okay. And he also heavily implied, or at least God did, that if Gary ever finds out how to be big again, he might turn evil. No, that was that was Morgan. And I appreciate that uh, that teaser. Okay. I'm still suspicious. Wait, did we take Gary's deal where like our grandkids, like two, three generations worth of us get free stuff? Something good from Gary? Yeah, I considered killing him just to see what Eli would do. <laughs> <laughs> Splitting off the timelines, <laughs> different dimensions. But we did take the deal. You did take the deal. Yeah. Okay. So Gary's al- Gary's alive, and he has to help us for three generations. That's right. Yeah. Okay. You make your way from the hamlet that will one day be Waterdeep, and find your journey surprisingly easy. With your newfound bodies and powers, you overcome obstacles without thinking about it. Traveling in a day, what would take weeks in your old bodies. With your new powers, you can cross rivers, burn away forests of black rot poisonous woods, and of course, those who would be foolish enough to get in your way quickly fall under your hand. Damn right they do. But those are stories for another day. You arrive at last at Castle Darkmoor, or what you assume will someday be Castle Darkmoor, but right now, it's something far more dark and dangerous. Right now, it is the lair of Tiamat. A giant mountain with one huge entrance. As you approach the entrance, you're surprised to find that the structure is far more welcoming to humans than you expected. There are no stalactites or stalagmites like you remember. There are no dank pools. Instead, you enter what seems to be a large and fine castle entryway. Directly in front of you is a huge golden door that bears the aspect of Tiamat herself. But there are five stained glass windows placed around that central entrance, and each of those bears the sigil and portrait of each one of her heads. White, green, blue, red, and black. You have barely taken in this sight when from all around you, a chorus of draconic voices speaks. Back so soon, the mighty four? Is this the Jewish one? (laughs) This is the Jewish one. Yeah, I figured this this is the one that's going to be the most different, so I figured this is the one I would do. Does it have little, like, does its horns go curly by its ears? Well, you can't see it. You can just hear it. Oh, okay. But yes. Okay. But, yeah. <laughs> but he's got a Bible, and a group of people are, like, chanting at you in Times Square. Well, he's, he's actually going to stop you and be like, are you Jewish? Are you Jewish? <laughs> and just give you Why a you lemon, a lemon for some reason. What are you doing? <laughs> not a lemon. You can't eat this thing. That's not a lemon? It's gross. Mm-mm. Someone offered what, that to Max during Sukkot, and he was like, nah, man. Yeah. He spiked it super hard, which was not great. <laughs> Our son has done some some beautifully atheistic things, <laughs> including refusing to go Shabbat. But that's that's a story for another day. All right. Back so soon, the mighty four. I appreciate your gift, but that does not mean I'll accept your company unannounced. No, wait, you are not the four who granted me my jewel. You are like them and yet not. What do you want, strangers, that bear the shape of the mighty four? Shit, I forget. What do we want? Oh, God. It was it was one of the... Half was, of the, the... Yes, half of the sunstone. It's the fiend stone. The fiend stone. Half. Uh, there's a, a part of a stone. We just beat up a mud guy, and then we came here. Does that help you? They don't care about Gary. Do you guys know Gary? Do y'all care about Gary? Uh, th- there's a stone we're looking for. Here to take away my pretty jewel, are you? Well, I'm afraid I don't just come out swinging to any pugilist that darkens my door. I'm protected by a shade of each of my heads. You'll have to undo their magic if you want to separate me from this lovely jewel. Good luck. 
And with that, the large central door in front of you opens into yawning blackness and the cave falls silent. Shades are undead, aren't they? They are undead, yes. Shades are undead. Shades are undead. Shades are dead. That actual undead. Oh, wait. That means I can do some uh, something. Oh, fuck. I have a lot to look at. And that was your other tattoo. I'm going to need three hours to look at this. <laughs> <laughs> that was your other character? No, I have some. I have some. I am. I asked about this last time. I asked about undead. I also asked about this. I had something. I have an ice knife. You emerge into a lush green forest. You're in a part of the woods where the sound of life around you becomes almost deafening. There's the call of birds, the crack of the underbrush, the call of insects. All of it surrounds you. That is, until everything becomes quiet. Then, a single draconic voice echoes out over the woods, seemingly from all directions at once. Welcome, adventurers, to my forest. I. And the aspect of the green dragon. Cunning, clever, and dare I say, a little bit willing to cheat. I'll admit I requested that the rest let me handle you myself. So you and I are going to play a little game of hide and seek. But don't worry, you won't be alone. The forest is full of unfortunate souls who sought to defeat us, just like you. So... Sadly, not all of them are friendly. And then the sounds of the forest reappear all around you. And you are in like the dead center of this lush green forest. I put on my ring of invisibility. All right. Ooh. Not it. Wait, not it? Yeah, because we said we were play hide and seek. I, oh. <laughs> I feel like. Nice. Not it. I feel like that's the way to go. Me and Snedrick are not it. And I'm invisible. That doesn't mean you're not it. You, I, th I think he's it. So we're trying to get out of this forest? I think we're trying to find whoever is it. It is unclear oh, what we're trying to do. Oh, the shade. <laughs> that was the shade talking Oh, I us. am it. So that as <laughs> we're all it and the aspect of the this, green this dragon. This is not like hide and seek at all. This is reverse hide and seek. If one person's hiding and we're all looking for him, this is seek and hide. Yeah. <laughs> In terms of ratios, that makes more sense as a title. Yeah. Well, this is germ. Germ? I mean, until... Oh, never mind. Forget it. It's, it's <laughs> oh, no, going by other names, too. You, everybody looks for the one person. If you find them, you also have to hide. Oh, so anyway. Nice. Did that guy who just gave us this speech, like, disappear right after that? And now we have to find him in the horse? Is that the impression you get? I don't think we saw him, did we? We just heard his voice? You didn't see anything. You just heard his voice. Okay. It's like this episode had a low special effects budget, and we're just doing... <laughs> Doing voices. No, there's a double, ra there's a triple rainbow all of a oh, sudden. There's oh. a triple rainbow and it fucking <laughs> opens up and then there's a, there's fucking two ninjas fighting and then, then Will Smith, is, not Will Smith, I don't like him, but then no. Dave the Rock Johnson, Dave, Rock, Dwayne, Dwayne, Dwayne the Rock Johnson is there and he says, hi, buy Pepsi. See? No, I just dropped our budget by a lot. <laughs> all right. Well done. What? So the product placement is expensive. Can't just say Pepsi. It's illegal. All right, so I'm going to do the th investigate. Fantastic. Roll that d20 for me. I accidentally rolled a nature check. All right. You rolled a 26, however, so that was I'll tell good. you what. But I don't know what I want to do f yet, so let me, let me check what nature checks do, and then I'll tell you what I'm checking for. Oh, you're going to learn something amazing about the flora and fauna around us. Yeah. You get poison ivy. Um, <laughs> what do nature checks do? It's just, it's just a... Like a, rec a recognition of flora, fauna, whatever thing? Yeah, th I think this would be actually an excellent nature check. Oh, okay. Oh, to recall lore about terrain, plants, animals, the weather, and natural cycle. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. So with a nature check that high, I'll tell you a couple of things. The first is you can see like broken branches and paths and footprints heading out from this spot. So you have a hunch that everyone starts here. More importantly, you can see a very clear path going ahead. And because of the excellence of that nature check, I will say that, Claw, you smell a fire mm, about 100 feet ahead of you. I got a shitty perception check, by the way. I only rolled a 12. I, uh, I got a really shitty investigation check. I only you all a see 11. a percentage of what I perceived. A, I perceived a 28. Whoa. All right, you see that. Plus, you can smell a human sitting by that fire. Okay. 
Which is weird, right? Because this is like an undead. So it, he would have smelled something undead, I guess, if it was the thing that we're up against, right? We, we were aware now that there's an invisible human next to the fire that we see. No, I think he's just far away. Not invisible. No, we just, yeah, we just smell a fire and a human about 100 feet away. Yeah. But he's not visible through the underbrush yet. Okay, can I summon uh, Sea Dog Cerberus, the huge, Absolutely. evil dog, to help us? Mm -hmm. The thick rope of gold around your wrist glows gold, and Cerberus jumps through a portal next to you. Yes, master. <laughs> hey, Cerberus, what's going on? So we're in this forest, and we're apparently looking for the the uh, the aspect of a green dragon. I'm not even clear what that means. But you have like dark vision and stuff. We're just thinking you could help us out. And then if we encounter anything, you could uh, help fight. Indeed. You don't have dark. That's right. You don't have. Dark. I have dark vision. I have dark vision. Me too. Nice. So Cerberus, I don't. I don't think so. Just yell stuff out when you see it. So I know. Well, I'll, I'll follow him because I'm invisible. And so then if he dies, I'll come back. <laughs> Excellent. Which direction do you wish me to go? I point him in the direction of the fire. But you're invisible, so it doesn't matter. You can point all you want. You can't fucking see I take see my you. ring off. I point. Actually, Sea <laughs> Dog can see you because he has uh, demon vision, which means he can see invisible things. Okay. Cool. Perfect. Then it worked. Sea <laughs> Dog, yeah, go ahead and, do, and go the direction that the, the bird was pointing. You can't see him, though. You can't even see yeah, us. Yeah, you don't know. We don't know. So we're just trying to explain it to him. I just want to make it clear the power dynamic that, like, he does what I say. So, yeah. So with Sea Dog and Claw leading the way, you all manage to sneak up unheard to the fire. And then wait, 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 wait. Are we all going or? Yes, we're all going. Oh, well, shouldn't we send... split up the fucking party? Are you kidding me? Shouldn't we send a scout party ahead to know what's going on first? There's four We are the of scout us. party. There's four of us. There's just, okay. You can't... <laughs> you're, I mean, you, you're invisible and the demon dog is probably like able to do that. I don't know. It's not a bad idea. Four and a half of us. I don't know. I mean, yeah, I just, I. Aren't we in like a, you know, crazy trial situation where we should play it somewhat safe? I, I hear you volunteering to be a scout, right? First of all, I don't trust you. I know you're going to steal some shit and we won't know about it. And then secondly, <laughs> and secondly, like, you know, I, I, I appreciate the whole like, but if I die, you guys can fight on thing. But that's not how we play it on this game, you know, because it's a show. <laughs> nah. Also, I probably won't steal because I'm a totally different person. Oh, that's right. right? That's right. Yeah, different person. <laughs> That's why we all have different voices. I guess. It's pretty funny if Eli's like, you all fall in a trap, you're dead. Show is over. <laughs> Show is over and should have sent a scouting party. Of podcasts. That's how you learn. Check out Dimension 20, everyone. I feel like they're still doing it. <laughs> we all go. All right, we're going towards the fire. But I'm still invisible. Go towards the fire. But he's going under protest, or rather, he's <laughs> he's going with us under protest, right? Yeah. Okay. Does anybody have marshmallows? <laughs> so with Sea Dog leading the way and Claw invisible, you creep unheard up to the fire. And there, through the trees, you see a lone ranger warming his hands and listening out into the dark. And he just sort of seems to be like... Okay, so wait, wait, so wait. Do you mean like the lone ranger? <laughs> But no. when you say Lone Ranger, do you mean one ranger or do you mean Army Hammer? The Lone okay, Ranger. Okay, I just, I, I'm doing a perception on, check on him and I got a 20. Nat 20, yep. motherfucker. Normal. You find a Superman. Yeah, it's just, <laughs> he's, just he's not Superman. It's just a dude. But he's an Uber mensch. He's part yeah. bat, part man. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's just a dude sitting there, warming his hands by the fire, kind of nervous because the forest is really noisy. Okay. Who are you? He hears your voice and he sort of stands up and draws his sword and says, who goes there? But we ask first. We, we, we asked you. We you, asked go, first. you have to say first. That's standard. And Rules. there's also more of us. You're alone. I am Breen Flagon. That's rough. And I oh. came here <laughs> to end. That's rough. Sorry. Just to really months. quick. Your name is Breen, Breen Flagon. Breen Flagon? Breen. Yep. That is my name. 
Feels like a lie. No. Nope. Feels like she a didn't. word my toddler came up with. Yeah. Feels like it was like, say a name, Breen. So maybe we wait until we find out that this isn't like our number one patron, Breen Flagon, who this is named <laughs> after, and then we make fun <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Once again, Breen Flagon, rest in peace. Daddy will always love you. Oh, oh what God. a shout out. <laughs> All right, so oh, Breen no. Flagon's dead, and we're fine. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is Breen oh, Flagon listening? No. <laughs> I, I, I feel bad because I used the, actually, that's a patron name for a dead kid joke before. I need to get more creative. Anyways, uh, he says, I am Breen <laughs> Flagon. I came here to end Tiamat's reign of terror. But aside from the Green Shade's original greeting, I haven't seen hide nor hair of him. Perhaps if you are willing to show yourselves, we could work together to find it. Lead the way and I will follow you with bow drawn to watch your backs. This seems super sus. So to be clear, you, you've you just created a fire here. You gave up about 10 paces from where you started and built a fire. No, he was like 100 feet. How long have you been looking around? I have been here for many moons. Many moons. So like a moon being 28 days, you've been like at least 56 days. It's probably 29. It's closer to 29. I was thinking of moons in terms of nighttime. Days. Yeah. That's not what that means. That's not I'm what pretty that sure means. It means the thing I, I mean, was it means going for. The new moon is... Uh, <laughs> I like, have yeah, seen I... the moon many times. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Breen flagon. Toy. And then you came back to here. So you like looked all around and then you came back to like where we where you started approximately. Yes. And started a fire. Just to be clear, the, the moon phase is like 27 days and seven hours and 43 minutes. Just for a really oh, is, uh, yeah. <laughs> green. In case that matters. I'm a master ranger. Then you would know that. Is that what they're calling it these days? Woof. Mm. Did you guys want to go? I sort of threw an offer out there to go help you find the green dragon do you want my help yeah so where have you where have you checked out so far do you like have an idea of like what you've looked yeah where, where you've looked around yes i have searched near and far and i've found nothing you're really vague with these like these big sweeping you've walked about 10 paces from the place the start in this this damn forest and uh and you said many moons just i mean he's like a hundred he's a hundred feet in thank you thank you invisible bird who i can hear but not see. <laughs> hundred paces. It's a lot of paces. So it takes twenty nine point five days to go from one new moon to the next. But the lunar, because of the Earth rotation, added to the moon cycle. That's the that's. Oh, the is this important or not? Because earlier it yeah, wasn't important. So it was, no, it was, it was important to me. <laughs> okay. Can I, so, like, what is he? What does he look like, just in general? Like, what is he wearing? He's a human ranger. He's wearing a green cloak and hood. He's wearing dragon scale armor and he has a pin of a green dragon on his lapel. Okay. Hey, I got a question. Can you take that pin off and let me look at it? Well, I was, yeah, I was going to do a sleight of hand check. I have a really high sleight oh, of hand oh, bonus. Oh, yeah, no, okay, all right, yeah. Go you, for it. You finish your thing. I, well, should I do the pin or should I just kind of like, I don't know. I don't know if the pin, because he might just turn into a green dragon and then we got to fight. I guess we got to fight a green dragon either way, right? Probably. If this is the green dragon trying to trick us, that's going to happen one way or the other. Yeah, so. I yeah, have so. plus seven insight, so uh, I can I could see if he's like lying to us. I have a plus twenty two sleight of hand, so like okay, whatever shit, I roll, do it. do it, buddy, is going to be really high. So I, I'm going to try and take the pin off of him. All right. So like we're going to walk up and like shake hands with him, like yeah, we're, like we're going to do the thing. Well, he's invisible. Oh right, yeah. Twenty five. Twenty five. With a twenty five. You snatch the pin off of his cloak, and even though he doesn't feel it, he sort of looks around and is like, what? Why are you all standing there just just staring at me? You're a little suspicious. I mean, this would be the point where someone... You're a little suspicious. I'm sure. Right, but we're not offering you anything, so... I know what this is. You are the green dragon in disguise. Yes, you are the green dragon in disguise. You're here to try to trick me or kill me, but I am too fast for that. And with that, he draws his bow and pulls back an arrow and aims it at you, Bridget. I slide oh. a hand, take the arrow out of his hand. <laughs> Make a slide a hand check for me. 
That's going to be a, a high check. 32. Nope. 32. You just sort of knock the arrow. It comes loose. He reaches for another one, pulls another arrow back at Bridget. Can I um, cast Circle of Power? What's that do? Read this. Read the description. Okay. Divine energy radiates from you, distorting and diffusing magical energy within 30 feet of you. Until the spell ends, the sphere moves with you, centered on you for the duration. Each friendly creature in the area, including you, has advantage on saving throws against spells and other magical effects. Are you extending this effect to Breen Flagon, or is he not getting that effect? He's not getting that effect right now because he has an arrow pointed at me. All right. So the minute this spell erupts around him, he looks in horror and then sort of like, you watch him shrivel down. His arm lets go. The, the arrow falls limply at his side. He shrivels down further and further and further until he's just sort of like a dry husk of a creature. And then he collapses to the floor dead. Oh, he was just magic. What the? That's what that what was. What did you do? Well, I it only lasts for 10 minutes. So let's continue walking and see who else we come across, shall we? Stay close. Did the pin disappear or do I still have the pin? You still have the pin. Oh, good question. Mm -hmm. Well done. I put the pin on. And as you walk forward, Bridget, just sort of accidentally, you step on like the corner of Breen Flagon and a little bit of like dust that he has turned into sort of gets on the edge of your boot. Ew, gross. Ew, Ew <laughs> I don't like that. And actually, as that happens, a sort of magical orb rolls out from under his cloak as well. Ooh, orb. Should I touch it? I feel like no. Let's do a, let's do an investigation and a perception and like all those things. I'm going to keep my concentration going for the next 10 minutes. You guys go do that. All right. I'll, <laughs> wait, who's got the highest? I have a plus five on perception. I have plus one. I have plus eight. I literally critically failed to investigate just now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll do one. I have a plus eight. Oh, I just did a plus five. Oh, nice. fuck yeah. So the ni 19 perception. So I'm going to perceive the shit out of that orb. With a 19, you actually recognize this orb. This is an orb uh, created at your old school, Snedrick. It's a relatively modern invention. It's for people who are cursed, especially if they have like a shriveling curse or a, a, a waning curse. It generates a magic field around them and keeps them alive, sort of like a pacemaker but it has been deactivated. Ooh, did I just murder him? I feel like he probably needed murdered <laughs> if he did. Yeah, like yeah. He's probably, it's probably not that bad. It's like murdering <laughs> Elon Musk. Yeah. <laughs> and as you guys are discussing it, the uh, image of the ancient green dragon, this sort of like snake-like green dragon appears and says, well, 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 what? Ow, oh my God, what happened? Did you guys murder someone in here? I feel like no. you, you're like collectivizing this whole thing. It was one of us, <laughs> all right, who murdered somebody. You murdered a guy? How was I supposed to know he was being kept alive by magic? No, that's fair. Look, I see a spell. Did you cast a spell on him? Look, if somebody's pacemaker goes out, it's not my fault for using the fucking <laughs> microwave, okay? Wow. This was, this. I, I recognize that bin. This is brain flagging, isn't it? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> he was the head of an orphanage. I burned down his orphanage. You guys are monsters. Well, you fuck. burned down the orphanage. We would have yeah. remembered if his name was Breen Flagon. That's <laughs> not <laughs> who you're looking at. I have a whole thing with traps and gestures and stuff, but you're just you're just out here murdering. Well, oh. you should know, but now now you should be properly afraid of us and just give us the fucking stone thing we're looking for. So what are we we're supposed to find one of your ghosts? What? Is that what's going on? Probably going to kill him when we do. You know, you can't stop us. It's hide and seek. I'm going to hide and there's traps and stuff. If you guys You're could, right in front of us right now. I'm in front of you now. I came by I to mock you. you a little. So we won, right? So we won. We found you. No, this is just, and he passes his hand through the trees. Like, this is just a projection, obviously. I didn't just show up for the <laughs> final fight. I thought I was going to come down and mock you. Right. And it turns out you're out here just fucking murdering people like <laughs> Jeffrey goddamn Dahmer. I'm going to walk forward until my 10 foot radius is, in is on him. And he vanishes. Delightful. I'm going to step back. All right, what All right. We didn't eat the motherfucker. He reappears. He what reappears. a weird thing to do. I can obviously <laughs> reproject this spell out if you just step back again. Cool. Are you going to just like 
follow behind us wherever we go. Is this hot or cold? I came out for a little banter and you guys were out here fucking serial right. killing. I didn't Let's realize. Let's just continue on, everybody. Shall we just continue on? Enjoy your cannibal holocaust. You can <laughs> follow us along if you want. I have traps and Let stuff. us know if we're getting close, you know. I certainly will. Play with our minds a bit. All right. Maybe don't conjure like people who run orphanages from now on. I'm just saying that's kind of on you. <laughs> he vanishes. All right, I'm going to smell for more fire. Oh, no, you you had a thing. Never mind. Yeah, well, no, actually, it's perfect because just as you walk another couple hundred of feet, you are overwhelmed by the smell of baking cookies. You follow the scent and emerge into a clearing with a large tree at its center. All throughout the tree, you see merry elves baking. Keebler elves. Well, now they're copyrighted, so they're not that one. <laughs> they're just elves. They're non-denominational. Schmeebler. Schmeebler. Smells. Smells. Wait, non-denominational? Did you say? Yeah. So Keebler is a religion in elf world? <laughs> Why else would they make cookies all the time? They feel Christian. I, I Keebler kales. I Thank say you. Girl Scouts Eat this fudge co- stripe, it is my religion. body. They feel, <laughs> yeah. you're saying the Keeblers don't feel culty? Those elves are fucking each other. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying that you have you have shined the fucking light on this for me, man. Yeah. This is, they're like the Nixium cult of the elf world. Anyways, they're... Oh, God. He turns the water into milk. They're fucking each other? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they're baking these delicious looking cookies. And as you approach, a rosy-cheeked elf in a green cap leans out the window and says, Well, hello, strangers. You look tired and hungry. Why don't you stop and have some cookies? There's a non-zero <laughs> chance we're going to accidentally murder you. You, guys, <laughs> you heard him say cookies all weird, right? I uh, he did. I'm going to do an insight check on yeah, him. Yeah, let's let's mm-hmm. insight the fuck out of that. Well, these are delicious cookies, so it's definitely not Keebler. Not fucking 20 again. 27 insight. Me too. Yeah. So with a 27, he's definitely hiding something. You can see the poison in the cookie. (laughs) (laughs) Are those poison chunk? What what is that? (laughs) What's in the cookies? Strychnine stripe. Why don't you taste one and tell me how you like it? How about you first? Why don't you eat one? one? You eat one and then uh, I'll eat one. Is Sea Dog still around? How dare you? (laughs) (laughs) You know... You would have made Carl eat one of those in a second. Uh, I don't. The, Carl, I have no idea what you're saying. What Carl? I don't even know what that means. Who is Carl? Me. I, that's what I'm asking. <laughs> you know, we aren't actually those people, right? We we, we have our, the memories. We're for us. The rest of the podcast. We're still us. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, we have the memories of being podcasters too. Oh, that would God. fucking suck. No. no. <laughs> Jesus. No. Maybe if we eat the cookies. We will. <laughs> All right, I'll try a cookie. No, I, he's gonna try one first. I'm pretty you, fucking hungry. I gotta be no, honest. Like, I know we're hemming and hawing about the poison, but oh. I, I fuck it. I, let me let me get one. Of those. Uh, you just no. Do your fucking bread robe if you're. Oh shit! You don't have your bread robe. I feel like yeah. I don't know what that means. Oh wait, wait, wait! If I have a really high survival skill, will that pertain to the poison? No. Cool. Never mind. Go for it, Heath. I'm trying it. <laughs> All right, you take a bite out of the cookie mm. and mm. die. <laughs> All right, you are you are going to take forty four points of poison damage. Ow! What the fuck? You know I can't fucking heal you this time, right? I'm not a cleric anymore. And the cookies, elves, and everything fades away, and the green dragon shade appears again and goes. Cookies? You just accepted cookies from strange <laughs> elves in the middle of the forest? They smell really good. So just to be clear, you met a man whose orphanage I burned down and you instantly killed him. You instantly murdered him. It wasn't instantly. We hemmed and hawed. <laughs> exactly. I didn't know it. I It was in defense. I didn't. He had an arrow drawn at me and I didn't know it would kill him. It's manslaughter at best. It ain't murder. Okay manslaughter. You guys are making this I'm not going to say easy, but definitely (laughs) weird. (laughs) I'll see you later. Are you going to finish those cookies? (laughs) No, by by all means. Take some more damage. Can I get one more? And then he vanishes. All right, but I have a cookie in my inventory now. It's You do, yep. You have a poison cookie. And you're poisoned, so you know, there's that too. How many points did I take? 44. Yeah, okay. I, I did it right. By the way, I have defense against poison as a dwarf. Immunity. 
immunity against poison? Yeah. Cool. So I guess you should have... Information I could have used yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> it says resistance, not immunity. Really? I might have that too. No. Are you sure? <laughs> Anyways. Anyways. <laughs> you continue through the forest until up ahead you hear the sound of barking and whimpering. And as you enter the clearing ahead, you find two golden retriever puppies. Ah, oh, it's golden retrievers. Holding the trans flag. <laughs> I. <laughs> this seems just universally positive. We really need to kill the fuck out of these puppies. This yo. is universally positive. I mean, you know, you absolutely know we should kill the fuck out of these puppies. Or give them the cookie. I'm not going to get close to them. We're just going to take a roundabout this clearing and we're going to continue on. I'd like to roll for playing with the puppies safely. All right. I don't think we can go around. I think we can. I will I will hack through the underbrush. Excellent. So, Dave, you lean down to, like, pet the puppies? Uh, Yeah, but I do like the thing where, like, puppies have to like you, where you're like, ah, and you get a nice you do yeah. the thing. Everybody, uh, make a quick dexterity saving throw for me. But first, I would like to attempt to do a backflip over the puppies and run away. Okay. <laughs> 25, dexterity. 25, nice. 12. Mm -hmm. 20 fucking three. That's sure. 20. That was an athletics check, though. You yeah, did that's for my acrobat. Work. That's for my, my oh, backflip okay. over the puppy. All right, I did no, a tw fine. 20 on dex just now. Yeah. Bridget, will you make a uh, dexterity saving throw for God me? God damn you. Heath, do you have an animal handling? Do you have a good animal handling score? Yep. Uh, plus three. I hate you all. That's a three. I have an animal ring that makes animals like me. There you go. Okay, so none of you actually saved as Dave bends down to pet these two golden retriever puppies. I didn't save with a 20. Nope. I'm going to force feed him that other fucking cookie is what I'm <laughs> going to do. <laughs> Can it even be more than 20? They burst out in an explosion of flame and you all take... That's going to be 39 points of damage. For everybody? 39? For everybody? everybody. Okay. I, oh, I have defenses against fire. Oh, what does that mean? Uh, it means resistance against fire, damage resistance when I clicked on it. Okay, so D Dave, you have resistance, which means you take half damage. So you'll take 20. I am nearly dead either way, even after just half. <laughs> well, I can't save you. I mean, you ate the cookie and... If I eat a second cookie, is there a chance it's the antidote? <laughs> Does anybody have healing spells? Yeah, but I feel like I'd have 39 more hit points if he was already dead, right? So I feel like there's that too. So the explosion flattens like a good 50 feet of forest around you. And once again, the green dragon shade appears and goes, you thought that there were golden retriever puppies in the middle of a forest? I feel like me and Clark are being unfairly lumped in with everybody that. else here. <laughs> it felt like you were on double bluff level by the time we got to them, <laughs> is what I thought. But it, it was just regular. I see that now. I have time for one more challenge for all of you. Well, given the bang up job we're doing so far, <laughs> I think <laughs> I'd like to bet on you. <laughs> Can we take a long rest before we do the third challenge? Just real quick. <laughs> Wait, I'm going to do, I have a spell that'll heal Heath. Hold on. I could use like 79 points of helping. I don't think I have anything that's going to really give you a significant amount that would be worth the spell slot. For those of you at home who are wondering, like the green dragon's just standing there tapping his foot. Well, <laughs> yeah, he's Cedric getting, getting impatient. I was actually sort of in the middle of a dramatic I know, moment. I know, I know, I know. He's just done all kind of dumb shit. Now he needs his wounds up. cured. But if we don't walk to the right, the next pitfall doesn't show up for us. We can stay here <laughs> to the leftish area. It's, right. left it's right a memory there. issue. It has to wait until we're there. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this Matt cure wounds. Well, fuck, that's that. God, that would be so dumb because like nobody else has taken. Oh, no, we've all taken damage. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to do this mass cure wounds at level five. Um, That's five D eight plus five. Uh, for everybody. Nice. nice. Roll that healing. Oh, wait, it's three. No, no, I wait. I was, I, I rolled it at the wrong. No, that's, sorry. It's three D eight plus five. Sorry. Shit. I, I was nowhere near as good as I thought it was, but I already, I already did it. So we got 18. We got it healed for 18, but that's not much. Nice. We all healed up. Ready for me to do my 
big dramatic moment. You, t- you know what? You take you you hold, you hold your damn horses. All right, now we're ready. All right. He waves his arm, and three golden chests appear in front of you. Inside one of these chests is me. I'll let you get the first spell, but if you miss, there will be consequences for the battle ahead. So we can cast a spell to try to, like, open one of the three? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Which chest do you think I'm in? Mm. I think think he's in chest number three. If there was another one of you here and you asked that other one which chest to take, which would they say? Wrong riddle. (laughs) What? I just asked you... A question. If I picked number three and you were to drop one or two and then ask me if I would like to change, which one would you drop? Damn it, that's exactly what I was about to do. I was about to do the Monty Hall problem. How dare you? How dare you foresee the Monty Hall problem? No, there's no, it's not, it's not, Green Dragon's very disappointed. Not like an unsolved problem or anything. All right, he's going to do the Monty Hall problem, so I suggest we take three and then take whichever one he doesn't drop because mathematically that gives us the best chance of succeeding. Okay, well, what what if, what if, and then 99 other chests appear and he opens all of them and he's like, what if I, I give you the option of three or two, but I, I opened 99 other chests, huh? What about that? Yeah. So we should go with two. Yeah, nope. Are you sure? Still the money hall, hall thing. Yeah. Are you sure? What? I'll add a hundred more chests. <laughs> nope. And then, and then I open them all. Hmm? <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying I'm right. I'm just saying I'm mathematically more likely to be right than if we did anything else. Very well. Cast your spell. I have no idea what you're talking about, so you go right ahead. Ditto. <laughs> Trust me, the nerds in our audience are loving this Monty Hall. Trust me. <laughs> I don't know that they are, but yeah, you know. <laughs> Short of him, like, turning into Ray Comfort, this is about as deep as fan service gets <laughs> on our podcast. All right, cast that spell at chest number two. What spell are we casting? What spell? Yeah. One of you gets to cast one spell at chest number two. Oh, I have, I have a fireball and I can hit both of them at the same time. No, you can't. No, yes, that's I can. not. It's against, <laughs> the, it's against the rules. <laughs> this one. Why? The chest space out. How far? <laughs> so all of my really good damage spells are spells that would be like to attack multiple enemies, basically. So if somebody has a good like kick him in the nuts type spell that they wouldn't mind. Because, you know, we might be like losing the slot. I wouldn't use a real high slot on it. But if anybody has a really good kick him in the nuts type spell or something like that, that they don't mind. I can attack it with my sword, which would be um, 1d8 plus 18 plus against undead. It's an extra 2d10. All right. Yeah, I think that's the way to go. I'm doing it. How far apart are the two chests that we're deciding between? 75 miles. <laughs> All right, that's... that's... <laughs> How far? 75 <laughs> miles. 75 <laughs> miles? Miles. Okay. <laughs> that's... Okay, so we don't have to worry about one of them. If we, if we get the wrong one, he's 75 We've got miles an hour, away. really, to... Yeah. <laughs> that's 21 to hit. So, Bridget, you come sailing... Chest number two, right? Uh, yes, the one that Noah said. You come sailing through the air, your epic sword piercing through the top of the chest. You hear a satisfying thunk. The chest lid slowly pops open. And inside you see a ranger in a green cloak pierced through the heart who says, I was just trying to find my brother Breen Flagon. Uh, cool. We go on to the first chest. <laughs> <laughs> and the green dragon pops out of the first chest and says, I gotta say, you guys turned out to be way more murdery than I thought you'd be. Wait, 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 wait. Because we started with the third and you opened the first chest. I mean, I popped out of the third chest, is okay, what I did. You're just making shit up now because this all right. Dungeons and Dragons. You're also 75 miles away. <laughs> You guys wait there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're just watching a dragon sort of jog towards you. <laughs> He's really far away, but we can see him. That's oh, weird. Second, we're going to have a big fight. Roll for initiative while you're there. Right. Get a second. Cool. I mean, if he's 75 miles away, I can start shooting arrows at him now. <laughs> yeah, right? Actually, you know what? I, I actually won't make you roll initiative for this fight. I'll just say he pops out of the chest, appears in front of you and says, all right, now, give me what you've got. What? Yeah. So I'm still going first. Okay, so we should all talk at the same time and not do turn based for a second. <laughs> 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 and 
have to go. I'm going to have Missiles, 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 <laughs> fireballs, everybody. Fireball, go. fireball. Grenade. I'm going to throw a lightning grenade. Bolt, lightning bolt. Are, are you saying we're calling it there? No, no, I'm saying you you can, uh, I want you guys to choose to do something rather than go through the, the measures of combat. You'll see why. Oh, is this another fucking trap? Do you want all of us to choose something at the same time? No, pick one. Pick one person to do something. <laughs> all right. I, you know what? I'm just going to try to hit him with my sword again. Can I do that? Everybody? Are we, uh, sure. Are we down? All right. Go for it. All right. That's a uh, 34 to hit. Holy shit. Bridget, you come sailing through the air. Again. Sword in hand. Mighty Avenger. I'm a fucking dragoon. And just before <laughs> you make contact... You see the dragon costume slip off the green hooded ranger's <laughs> face okay. as he whispers, we were the only triplets in our village. And then you <laughs> slice Jesus. off his head. You cut him clean in half. <laughs> I didn't even roll damage. You didn't need to. He's just a guy. He's just a human. You killed He's him. He's <laughs> just another fucking human. You could not roll low enough damage to not kill... Threen Dragon, the triplet. Threen, the two nice. brother. Threen, Threen Dragon. dragon. Yes, I, I like that he has to have a different last name, too, because that would be boring <laughs> if they all had the same flag. And... They all married outside, yeah. Guys, I feel like we make, like, a donation to the orphanage at the end of all this. Just... <laughs> you can't. It's burned down. The orphanage just Honestly, burned down. Yeah. <laughs> Start a new one. I, it, it, yeah. It already burned down. I mean, let's let's face it. Like, I mean, it's sad and all, but these guys were terrible at owning orphanages. You know, their, <laughs> their track record was really bad. It's probably a better thing, ultimately, we end up in this situation. All right. So he cheats. He's a cheaty cheater, and he didn't give us a fair chance at the Monty Hall problem. So. That's true. Uh, so you're all sort of standing in a semicircle as you say this, and then you realize that there's one extra of you, the sort of humanoid-sized dragon, green and, and different than the illusion he's projected before. You can tell that this is the shade of the green aspect, and he turns to you guys and he said, well, I did warn you. Everybody roll initiative for me. Okay. <laughs> Hey, everybody, just jumping in to thank you once again for listening to the show. Got you a nice, long episode this month because you know what? You earned it. You put up with those shorter episodes, those prep episode things where you only got 30 or 40 minutes. And I, I could have made this two episodes, but I said to myself, no, no, you podcast listener deserved a nice honking chunk of Dungeons and Dragons. And we, we loved doing it for you. We love making this show. We're having such a great time to do it. Real quick, we just want to thank everybody who has left a review for the shows. Thanks to y'all. We have made it into the top hundreds on iTunes charts, not just nationally, but internationally as well. Helps new people find the show. We have some brand new listeners to the show who don't listen to other other stuff and who have now tuned into other stuff. And it makes us feel really, really happy that uh, people have found us through this thing and that you are still enjoying it. We are going to keep doing it for as long as you want to listen to it. And hey, if you love the show, why not head over to patreon.com forward slash dnd minus, all spelled out. You can contribute to the show. If you've been listening the whole time, you know our Dungeon Master level patrons get to actually put things into the adventure, whether it's magic items or characters or NPCs. There's all sorts of cool stuff you can be doing at that level. But even at the lower levels, you get extra stuff and behind the scenes stuff. It, it's, it's a lot of fun. Plus, you're paying our rent and feeding my baby, which we greatly appreciate. All right. I think that's it. I'll see you next month. All right, give me those initiative rolls. 21. 22. 16. 26. 26 over here. Okay, Talon slash Claw, you are up first. Yep, as for same. Okay, so this is a man-sized green dragon mm -hmm. with like an attitude problem. So I'm going to do an oath bow shot with an arrow of returning. And then if I hit, I'm going to do a bunch of sneak attacks, but I'll do this first. I want to clarify something about sneak attack because this seemed confusing. Mm -hmm. Sneak attack is a thing that you get to add on when you have advantage. Okay. So you've got to put yourself in a position of advantage and then 
if you hit, you get to add a sneak attack onto that. Okay, well, I'm invisible, right? You are invisible still. Yes, that's true. Which gives you automatic advantage. Yeah, so I'm going to be behind him. I'm going to like move to behind him. You said we're all like kind of in a huddle, right? Yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to go like two to five feet behind him and fire the oath bow. Oof, not great. 14. 14, that will not hit. So yeah, you, you slide secretly behind the green dragon. You pull back and fire an arrow. And almost as though he wasn't there in the first place, he ducks down and says, ooh, someone was trying to take a sneaky little shot. I like your style. I stay perfectly still and silent. All right. Do you do anything else or is that your turn? <laughs> well, I can't do a sneak attack, right? No. Okay. Let me just check bonus actions. Uh, you get advantage on that. So actually roll that again. Oh, okay. That's the whole point of the sneak attack. That is a 25. Yes, that will hit. So he ducks down the first arrow phew, goes over. He ducks down. But while he's sort of talking yeah, smack, ooh, you hit sneaky, him again. And then bam, I hit him with another one. <laughs> right. So after he talks to me, I'm going to do the sneak attack damage, which is 10d6. Mm-hmm. Holy crap, that's so many dice. That's 11 plus 10d6. 34! So plus 11 or no? You plus 11, yeah. So 45. Because you do get the, so 45 total damage, yeah. So he ducks down, does this little quip, and before he can finish his sentence, just thunk, another arrow just goes straight into his chest, and he looks down and goes, ow, that really hurt. And then I'm going to do Sudden Strike as a bonus action, Mm -hmm. which is an additional attack, right? Do it. 26 to hit. Damn. Yep, that'll hit. Jesus, are we even going to get a chance on this guy? (laughs) (laughs) The bird has talents. And then plus six damage, not very much. Six damage, yeah. So, ow, that really hurt. And he (laughs) barely gets into saying hurt, and then another arrow thunks into him, and he's like, (laughs) okay. (laughs) (laughs) Is that it? That is it, unless you want me to do my returning checks now. No, you're good. Okay. I like that you're far away and just doing this arrows, but in my head, (laughs) a bird is flying around this dragon's face and he's just swatting and missing and swatting (laughs) and missing and freaking out. All right, Dave, you are up. Okay. I would like to cast... What did um, did Sea Dog get initiative-wise, just so I know? He acts on your initiative order. Oh, so he goes right after me? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. Can he go before me? Sure. All right. So, hey, uh, Sea Dog. Yes. Yeah. Will you uh, attack that dragon best way you can? You got some good magic, maybe? Or do you want to attack him like physical? Mm, I will attack him with my teeth. Teeth? Do you have magic? Are you magic? Yes. What do you, what do you got magic wise? Can you do the fireball shit? Or? I can. Well, yes. As, as you remember. I can breathe fire out of one of my mouths or all three at the same time. Oh, yeah. Do, the, do, do some fire breathing. The, the triple. Do triple fire breath? Yeah. All right. Give me one second while I look that up. Why would you ever take one if you could get three? Because he has to recharge the three. Yeah, he can only... I gotcha. Do dragons automatically get fire blocking damage stuff? Yeah. No. It depends on the dragon. Does Probably this not one? the green ones. This is an aspect of a dragon, isn't it? Can I oh, right. Can I investigate whether this dragon will block f- fire damage? Oh my God. No, because no. that'll be your action. That'll be your action, and then you won't have actually done that. Yeah, you'll yeah. find out. I guess this, <laughs> this, this is a test. This is a test. This is a test. Uh, thank you. So, Sea Dog's fire is in a 15 foot cone, and every creature in the area must make a DC 17 dexterity saving throw. Do you still want him to do the fiery cone even though it's going to get everybody or should he aim for something a little bit more? But if he has a fire ray that only aims at one person, I guess we could just use that and then we could stop doing geometry. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Hey, Sea Dog. Yes. Yeah. So we've been uh, arguing for a while <laughs> about trigonometry <laughs> and geometry stuff. Little trick, little trick. And mm-hmm. none of us really remember it from high school. Right? So, uh, <laughs> Y, y equals MX plus B. Yeah, exactly. I don't even know what that meant. So can you get, just do the th- the one, th- the, th- the single shooter thing that you could do and only hit the, the clearly bad guy, the dragon. Yes, you got it. This is going to be plus 11. Oh yeah, that'll hit. 
and that's going to do 21 damage. So yeah, he he this fire ray exudes from one of his mouths. Let's say it's the sea dog mouth. Uh, it does 21 damage to the dragon. <laughs> I don't think it exudes. <laughs> that just feels like he's shitting out fire, right? He <laughs> ejaculates some lightning. <laughs> <laughs> now, Dave, very important because you just sort of saw how space is affected. Where would you like Sea Dog to move or be now? All right. So there's five of us, including Sea Dog, in a semicircle, evenly spaced out. Mm-hmm. Wait, but Claw is behind him, so there'd be four of us in a semicircle and then Claw behind him, correct? Mm-hmm. Right. Okay, him and Claw are like right up on each other. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like right behind him. Claw said five feet Claw, back. Claw, that's weird. Just space, spatially what you're doing is weird. Just want to note that. I know. He's doing, okay. they're, they're actually singing the thing from Ghost. <laughs> <laughs> that's more geometry. Don't do this. <laughs> No, that's a sneak attack. Holy All shit. Right. Is that an unchained melody? It doesn't matter. <laughs> so, Sea Dog, good good work, by the way. Good work. Good uh, aim and all that. And now, could you move to where, theoretically, you could do your fire breathing and only hit the dragon and, like, go behind him is the, the empty part of the semicircle. You know what I'm saying? Perfect. Great. He's in the center of the semicircle. Yeah. All right. Dave, you are up. All right. I would like to cast. Ooh. I spent a while looking at all this too. Mm -hmm. (laughs) She's like trying to relearn all this stuff. Yeah. Level 20 choice paralysis is real. Yeah. It's, it's for real. Mm -hmm. I'm going to cast finger of death level seven. So I would send negative energy coursing through a creature that I see within range, causing it searing pain. Fucked up Gary with this earlier. Mm -hmm. The target must make a constitution saving throw. 78 plus 30 necrotic damage on the failed save. Half as much on a successful one. Ooh, what's he got to roll on that constitution saving throw? Any chance this dragon is a humanoid? It is a humanoid right now, yes. Oh, fuck yes. If I kill a humanoid, it becomes on our team as a zombie. (laughs) If that happens. (laughs) But I don't see that, you know. Yeah, probably. see that as relevant right now. I did really clobber the motherfucker, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so I'm ca- I'm casting that. Nice. What does he have to save? Con 21. Oh, that's a 12. That will not do it. <laughs> Boom. This guy's getting hit. 78 plus 30. Yeah. Oof. Roll that damage. 67. Holy Ooh. shit. Oh. 67. <laughs> Is he a zombie? Are you doing the same as last time where you did the middle finger? I think it was the middle finger last time. Uh, yeah, I'm doing double birds, to be clear. Yeah. Double Fingers birds. Yeah, some- Absolutely. Two finger guns. So the double birds just appear in sort of burning necrotic light on his chest. And he goes, ah, wow. If I were to describe that pain, it would be excruciating. <laughs> Searing, probably, right? It would, would be you necrotic. You're, you're searing. <laughs> yeah. Necrotically. Necrotically searing. Bonus actions. Extra stuff. Anything else? Yes. Bonus action. I have I have a Thunderbus with me. Oh. <laughs> you can fire your Thunderbus as a bonus action? I believe I can. She, really? No way. I have a thing that lets me do any spell as a bonus action. Also, you you uh, did as canon let me throw my r- necklace of fireballs as a bonus action. No, so when, while holding this thunderbus, you can use an action to expend one or more of its charges to cast one of the following spells. So you do you do need an action to do, not a bonus action. Uh, yeah, okay, the, but there was something where I have I can use a spell as a bonus action because of some other cool thing that I, they gave me. You can cast a spell as a bonus action. This isn't casting a spell. You're firing it out of a preloaded Thunderbus. Oh, okay. So, but, all right. Then I'm going to cast a a not Thunderbus spell, even though I do have the Thunderbus right there. Ready to go. You do? I like, I brandish it for a second and I'm like, oh, but I don't need this yet. (laughs) And the dragon's like, oh, shit. You just pull out a gun and then slowly put it away. Yeah. All right. I got a wall of fire that's a, a, a legit spell. I have a wall of fire as well. The wall of fire could hurt this person and kind of help block, perhaps. I create a wall of fire on a solid surface within range. You can make the wall up to 60 feet long, 20 feet high, and one foot thick. Or a ringed wall up to 20 feet in diameter, 20 feet high, and one foot thick. It's opaque. It lasts for the duration. 
When the wall appears, each creature within its area must make a dexterity saving throw. Failed save. Creature takes 5d8 fire damage or half as much if they succeed. One side of the wall selected by me when I cast it deals 5d8 fire damage to each creature that ends its turn within 10 feet of that side or inside the wall. Oh, okay. So I get to like hurt him and pick the side that he's on and then hurt him again, maybe. Yeah. All right. And at higher levels, where am I, where am I looking for it here? I was thinking of doing it at six, maybe. Yeah. When you cast this spell using a spell slot, fifth level or higher, the damage increases by 1d8 for each slot above fourth. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to cast it at a uh, six. Six. Do it. All right. Hit that little cast button for me. Now tell me how this wall is positioned. All right. So it is going to be basically on him. So he's in the middle of the wall. Got it. So this wall of fire, uh, very Daffy Duck, this one foot wall of fire just like springs up oh, directly between his legs. It's 60 feet long and 20 feet high. Yes, but it's one foot thick. Yeah. So it, it completely misses your companions. It's just a, this very thin, almost picket fence of flame. Yeah, yeah. It's a really big wall, but thickness wise, it only hits this guy because I'm putting it right on him. So he's like 60 feet in the air now, right? Oh, does it carry him upwards? <laughs> Daffy Duck does. style, I feel like it does. It absolutely has to, yeah. So he goes, he, you cast this spell and he just goes shooting up into the air and he's like, ah, yeah. Let me, uh, let me roll that dexterity saving throw for him. And then he bounces around on his butt like Mario for a little yeah, bit. Yeah, exactly. He's, <laughs> he's got to hit a dex 21 to save. 21 to save. That's a 17. Won't do it. So yeah, shoots up into the air with fire. Roll that damage for me. All I right. think it's 78. It is 78 for the first round of damage. He's probably going to take fall damage too, right? When he comes back down. <laughs> mm -hmm. 35 damage there. 35 damage. Yeah, fall damage. Good point. Because he doesn't have wings. He can't land gracefully. Yeah. Anything else before the end of your turn? Uh, so I picked the side that he is on because I put it like slightly, you know, so that a bit of him is in it, but he's clearly on that side of it. I'm going to pick that side. Okay. I'm probably on that side, right? Yeah, Talon is also on oh, that no, side. I can, I can curve the thing so that it, it only is hitting him. All right. Also, no, you know what? I can do the sculpting thing where I don't let area of effect things hit my friends. Ah. Nice. Fuck yeah. Excellent. So we'll, we'll resolve that when it's his turn. All right. Anything else on your turn, Tiff? I'm done. Nice. Snedrick, you are up. Am I standing like... In terms of the semicircle, which you, you've made important, this was your decision, not mine. Mm -hmm. Am I standing directly across from him or am I off on one or the other wing of the semicircle? You're off on one or the other wing of the <laughs> semicircle. And based on sort of the physics we've employed, he is either, and you get to choose, he is either 60 feet in the air being blasted <laughs> up like Mario or he has landed back to the ground. Okay, it he hasn't to landed to yet. Yeah, that's okay, cool. th that's very important for my thing. <laughs> awesome. So I'm going to cast Sunbeam. It's going to seem like pretty shitty, actually, after what everybody else has done. My, my, my spells are mostly for taking out whole armies, guys. Mm -hmm. um, that's okay. You don't, they, for, they're from Canada. You don't know them. Um, <laughs> I do. So, well, not these ones. Not these ones. Very, they're very tough. They're in Quebec. I get the, it. The, the Norwegians or whatever send us a letter thanking us for World War II. Then I know them if they're in Quebec. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> We got Canada covered. All right. So a beam of brilliant light flashes out from your hand in a five foot wide, 60 foot long line. Each creature in the line must make a constitution saving throw. Uh, that's a 22. On a failed save, a creature takes 68 radiant damage and is blinded until your next turn. On a successful save, it takes half as much damage and isn't blinded by the spell. But undead have disadvantage and oozes. I don't, he's not an ooze, but undead have disadvantage on this saving throw. You can create a new line of radiance as your action on any turn until the spell ends. So like I can keep doing this right for up to one minute. Oh, all right. Roll that damage. Cause he missed his constitution. Saving. Okay. So if he's blind and falling 60 feet back to the earth. Yes, exactly. He's <laughs> blindly falling and yep. he did 34 damage. 34 damage. All right. Excellent. Bonus actions. Anything else? I don't have a bonus action worth doing. All righty. Brant slash Bridget. 
You were up. All right. Turns out I was wrong. I have a bunch of fucking healing stuff. So who needs to be healed again? <laughs> oh, I, can, I can use some. I, I, I'm, at, I'm down to 41 out of 102. Uh, I can also okay. use some if you're giving it I'll out. Go fuck yourself. You'll fu- you go fuck you yourself. You go fuck yourself. You made me kill you, a dog. You killed triplets. No, the triplets. dog was a trap. You killed triplets. The <laughs> dog, very clearly a trap. The dog killed itself. The dog was on, on, on its own. Illusion. All right. Well, okay. So first I will, as an action, did I try to hit him at all? Or you guys, you guys seem to have it covered. I'm, I'm just going to try to heal <laughs> the people who need to be healed. I mean, I can use it. Like if you're doing an everybody, I could use a few hit points, but I'm not in like any trouble. Oh, it, yeah. yeah. I, as a bonus action, I, I can do, uh, can deal anyone who has less than half their hit points. I can help, help out. I have more than half my hit points. All right. In that case, I'm just going to go ahead and heal him, and then I'm going to use another bonus action. Thank you. <laughs> Grandparent of Bridget. In action, you can touch creature to restore en- any number of HP remaining in the pool, which I have up to 100 at this point. Oh, wow. I'm going to go ahead and give you a high five, and how much do you need? Uh, as many as 61. Uh, okay. 61. You're back to full health. Nice. <laughs> All right, so this healing glow emanates from Brand, and Dave's grandfather is back to fighting strength. Any bonus actions? Anything else? Uh, one sec, I'm doing math. I, I, for some reason, it didn't do it for me. Hey, hey, Anna, we're what? Bosniks. We don't do math. <laughs> <laughs> I know it won't. It won't like do multiple ones, which sucks. So I have to literally just times. click it. 61 oh, fucking times. Wait, do you just have you like know a shitload of life and you took it away from yourself to give it to me? because I was No, no I no. have a lay on hands pool is what I have. She's she's pressing like heal, 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 heal yeah. over and over and over again. Oh my God. No, it's, it's not, literally, there we go. Confirm. Done. You're, liter- you're literally killing no illusions. Just so you know. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I, I, all right. Uh, bonus actions. For a bonus action, you're going to drive down to Georgia and throw a spear through no illusions heart. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's Bridget's turn. So he is in the air. He's been firewalled. He's been sunbeamed. And just as he starts to fall down, green wings burst out of his back. What? And he sort of catches his breath as he flaps in the air for a moment. And he says, oh, fuck. No fair. I'm going to need all of you to take a knee. And grasping roots and vines erupt in a 20 20- foot radius centered on a point in the ground that the dragon can see within 120 feet of it. Dragon can't see. He's blind, right? Oh, that's right. Fuck. (laughs) (laughs) I'm giving Morgan an inspiration point. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So he says, uh, I'm going to need you all to take cover. (laughs) A wall (laughs) of tangled brush. That's nowhere near as good as the knee bit. (laughs) I bet you're very upset. Uh, a wall of t- no you know what he does he says uh, nope he has to be able to see a wall of tangled brush bristling with thorns springs into existence on a solid surface within 120 feet of the dragon the wall is up to 60 feet long 10 feet high 5 feet thick and blocks line of sight when the l- wall appears each creature in its area that's all of you must make a DC 15 dexterity saving throw any creature that fails that save Will take 18 piercing damage and be pushed five feet out of the wall's space. What's the, the dexterity? 15. He can make the wall in like a curvy shape or is it so thick that it gets all of us no matter what? It gets all of you no matter what. If I'm flying, does that change anything or no? False. Are you flying? I'm floating off the ground. I got a five. No, you were right behind him. Yeah, but I was floating off the ground. He was floating off the ground. You were floating off the ground? Yeah, like I'm yes. like, you know, not using my... I'm not standing. I'm like, like Watto from The Phantom Menace. Was that too far? How dare you? How dare you? We pretend that movie Get doesn't the fuck exist. Off this call. <laughs> Get out. You remember the Jewish stereotype in uh... in this show? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> All right. Twelve failure. What do we have to save? Dexterity. Yes. Five certainly didn't do it. We have to save dexterity against 15 is what you got to hit. I didn't either. I already took the damage. It was 18 damage. Is that yep. right? 17 save for me. I got an eight, but I have advantage because of my robe of the arch magi. Ooh. So mm-hmm. dexterity saving throw and I failed again. Okay. 
All right. So this this wall of thorns sort of comes up in amongst you and covers you and grows all around you. And you all find yourselves sort of in this thicket of thorns that the dragon has just summoned. Oh, no, it pricked my finger. Ooh. And (laughs) then another wall. Oh, my God. (laughs) And then he turns to you, Dave, and he says, come on, friend. Surely we can get along. How does he turn to Dave? If yeah, he can't, he can't see. see. He can hear him. Okay. <laughs> Dave breathes You're really loud. The wrong that direction. stretch. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird. You said that backwards. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Make a wisdom saving throw. Uh, me? Yeah. Okay. Got to hit a 15. That's a 14. That's a 14. You are now charmed. Oh, but I have advantage on this. Oh, all right. You're not charmed. Fuck. Yeah, I am charmed. Aw, 14. <laughs> you are charmed! Oh, no. Dave, as you look at this dragon flapping above you... Hold on, I have passive wisdom of 19. Can I just block? No. Okay. Um, Passively? Do you realize that this guy, he's, he's not so bad. And so now you cannot attack the charmer with harmful abilities or magical effects. What? Hold on. I, I can get out of this. I have a thing. Yeah, think about that. <laughs> no, I, I actually think I like legally can get out of this. I have a thing. Okay, I have a thing called Lucky. I get to do it three times per long rest. I haven't used it yet. Whenever I make an, uh, an, uh, any saving throw included, I attack roll, ability check, or saving throw, I can use one of these things to get a, to roll an additional d20, and I get to choose which one I use. Do it, baby. Okay. So I'm rolling a D20 to beat a 15. Better not shit this one, too. It's a it's a wisdom check. It's a wisdom check. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, that's a 10. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> okay, I'm going to use a second one. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Wait, wait, wait. Right, we, may, we may need those. We may need those. Yeah, definitely going to fucking need those. You're fighting a bunch of dragons. This God is the it. first of five dragons. Yeah, and we've done a lot of damage. We don't like, know when our next long rest is going to be. We're going to get four more turns before he goes again. All right, so now, all right, but no, fine. I'm going to be flirting with the green dragon for the rest of the fight. That's great. <laughs> yeah. Standard for us. Uh, yeah, like normal. <laughs> so, fair enough. As per usual. All right, Claw, you are up. Have we taken a long or short rest since the Gary fight? No. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah you have. You took a long rest over Hill before. And Dale. Yeah. Oh, I didn't yeah, take any rest Hill. after the Gary oh. fight. Yeah, I didn't either. Was, it's too late. Don't take it now. That would be fun. <laughs> no, but I, I also have that lucky thing, and I used one in the Gary fight, and so I... Sure. I you can it. undo your luck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing I did last time. I'm going to do... Oh, okay, so first of all, can you give me essentially where the walls are, where he is, where we are? It's all a little hazy. Yeah, so you are all, except for you, standing in a semicircle still because no one moved except for Cerberus who's standing next to you. He made a wall of thorns grow through you, right? Basically, like, imagine if he had just done exactly what Dave did with the wall of fire except he did it with plant matter. Yeah? You are hovering just above the ground which doesn't affect that so you are also in amongst this wall. You can move through it but it's difficult terrain. So we're within the wall. You are within the wall, yes. The, the thorns grew up around you. How thick is the wall? Five feet. Okay. How tall is it? Ten feet high. Ten feet high. Sixty feet long. Did we take damage when the wall thorned us? Yeah. Uh, yes, you did. I forgot what it was. It was 18. 18. Was 18. Yeah, okay. Got it. So to get out of this wall, are we going to have to attack our way out of it, or is it saving throw way out of it? Uh, you saving throw your way out of it. And it's which one? Dexterity? Yes. So did, would it make a difference in the saving throw if I go up or to the side? Because they're no. obviously a different distance. Okay. Then I'm no, going to try and go up mm-hmm. out of the wall. He's on the ground now. He's stopped flying. No, he's, he's flying in the he air above you. Okay. 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 So I still have my ring of invisibility on, but he's going to see the brambles, obviously. No, nah, you're still invisible. That does you can't. Because then all invisibility wouldn't really matter. Okay. would be like, I see the wind around you. And it's like, I... Okay. So I'm going to try and break through the top of the wall. You automatically do. It's just about whether you take a damage on the way out. Okay, cool. So a dexterity saving throw for damage. Mm -hmm. Oh, that is a 31. Oh, yeah. You're not a not a scratch. Not a scratch. <laughs> you like gently place a single toe on each th- on the sharp <laughs> part of the thorns, and still 
you just go sailing into the sky. So he is still 60 feet in the air? Yeah, just above 60 feet. Okay, I'm going to, let me check how high I can fly. Because I kind of want to get like above him. I want to try and get above him. Your flying speed is 50 feet. Okay, so I can't get above him, but I could get to pretty much like equilateral. 10 feet below him, but yeah. Well, so I was, uh, yeah. Okay, so. And is Dave's firewall still up? Yes. Unless he's dismissed it without telling. Is it helpful for it to be there? Well, I'm going to place him between me and the firewall. I'm going to try and place, I'm going to try and get like to his height between him and the firewall so that on my next turn I can go higher and try and force him down maybe. Ooh, didn't he also get hit by that wall at the end of his turn? Oh, yes, he did. Thank you, Dave. Let me roll that damage. 78, I think. It was a level six. I think, se- no, 78 was the spell. Uh, but 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 it's at, at a higher level than four because I cast it as six. You're right, it is seven. Yeah. Will that force him down at all or will, it, will he stay pretty much That's 37 he... more. Oh, all right, you rolled it. Okay, nice, 37 more damage. That doesn't move him at all though? No. Nope. Okay, so I'm going to get 50 feet high. I'm going to try and get between, so that he's between me and the wall of fire, even though the wall of fire is below him. Sure. And I'm going to do some more arrow of returnings. Nice. Remember to roll with advantage. 28. That'll hit. Yeah. Okay. So I don't need to roll the second one. Let's do the sneak attack. I would roll the second one anyways. Make it a critical. Oh, it's true. 22. Nice. All right. Well, both of those hit. So roll that damage. 33 plus 11. So 44. Talon. So just to paint a picture here. Talon comes dancing out of the thorns of this brush, beautifully sailing through the air, arcs back at an angle, just waiting. Like you can see, if we're doing this cinematically, you can see his bow pulled back. And as his sights angle up and up, he just gets a tiny peek of the top of the dragon's head, lets go of the arrow, and it goes flying, thunk, right into the center of his skull. And he sort of grasps at the arrow and, ow! (laughs) We didn't see any of that. He's invisible, but Cerberus saw. <laughs> Cerberus told Cerberus is like, "Yo, that was cool, <laughs> guys. It looked really cool." Nice. Cerberus is like, he was avoiding raindrops. It was that elegant. But it then, was very. No cool. one else saw it. <laughs> very John Woo. Some doves took off out of nowhere for no reason. I don't know. You guys like John Woo? I'm a big John Woo fan. He's in hell. <laughs> what? Uh, no bonus actions or anything. Yeah. Can you investigate why John Woo's in hell? <laughs> yeah, I'm confused about that. What did he do something? Not Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, are you sure? He doesn't look wooish. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm gonna take the cunning action as my bonus action, but I don't know that it actually helps. Oh, but I can dash upwards, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So I'm gonna dash another. 25 feet upwards. All right. That puts you above him. Yep. All right, Dave, you are up. You can have Sea Dog go first or second, up to you. But remember, you can't do anything that harms him. That harms Sea Dog? No, that harms the, the dragon. But Cerberus can? A charmed creature can't attack the charmer or target the charmer with harmful abilities or magical effects. I'm going to say that Sea Dog's allowed to attack. I don't okay. think I don't think he counts as an ability. All right. Hey, Sea Dog? Yes. Yeah, you want to grab this Thunderbust real quick? I've got a plan. <laughs> okay. <laughs> With your teeth. There's going to be if if you have this dog shoot your Thunderbust <laughs> With his teeth, there's going to be disadvantage involved. I just need <laughs> you to know that. It's a three-headed that. dog. It could have one holding it and then the other one pulling the trigger. This, is a, just, this dog, I'm not giving this dog regular abilities to shoot a gun. Will I give this dog an ability to shoot a gun? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Listen, David didn't raise no fool, but he will be doing it with disadvantage, just so you know. <laughs> All right. So he will be shooting... The fireball. I'm also going to hand him my um, my necklace of fireballs real quick. Okay. Now, he doesn't get a bonus action. He only gets one action. Are you sure he doesn't get a bonus action? Yes. All right. We're going to have him do... We're going to have him do the... the the Because this won't be disadvantaged. He's, a three-headed dog can throw a, a necklace, right? 
These are the questions. I have never seen a dog throw a thing. Yeah, but like he catches it in his teeth and then throws it up at him. It's like a magical three-headed dog. I feel like it's got some kind of throwing ability here, right? He can speak English. I mean, it seems like he would be smart. No, you're right. To... I've never seen one do that either. <laughs> I I will allow for him to catch a necklace and throw it, but it's definitely going to be with disadvantage. Oh, so so same as the Thunderbus? Yeah. Can I not throw it to him and just hand it to him? Does that help? No, it's not It's not the catching that's the price. <laughs> it is a deal about the catching. It is a three-headed dog throwing a, fi a, a fireball marble 60 feet in the air. I think that is a disadvantage action. <sighs> if you want the dog to shoot this gun, he'll shoot the gun. He's just going to do it with disadvantage. I, li I, like, I like the dog shooting the gun and then just, you know, hand it back that's, to me when that's, it's done. That's better yeah. for the cartoon, for the eventual cartoon. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. So you flip this... Thunderbust, this golden, shining, reverberating with magic Thunderbust. You toss it to Carl. Lady Voice catches it between her teeth. Sea Dog reaches down and puts his tongue on the trigger. And Santa Dog Head goes, You've been a naughty boy. Ho, 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 ho. And what spell fires out of the Thunderbust, Dave? That would be the fireball. Fireball. He's got hands and like. Digits, right? It doesn't have to use the tongue. That's what I'm saying. Dog. Dogs don't have Again, digits. Again, it's better for the cartoon if he uses the tongue. Yeah. Dogs also definitely don't have digits. What? Dogs have I have digits. a dog. I have a dog. Uh, yeah, they can't use them. Yeah. Not very well. This is but They can Cerberus. use them for holding down the end of a bone while they gnaw on the other side. And that mm -hmm. is about it. Right. Their feet. Actually, that'd be pretty badass if he did that right now, right? <laughs> Okay, so he's got to get a 21, and I'm giving him advantage. That was a seven. <laughs> That's another seven. Yes. Two sevens in a row, a critical seven. So yeah, that fireball explodes. Roll that damage. Excellent. All right, so that was this fireball. That's 11 D6. 11 D6. Oh, hold on. 41. 41 damage. All oh, right. So. Carl pulls, oh, we've been a naughty boy, and the fireball explodes, and you just see the green dragon sort of look surprised for a moment. He just vanishes into the flames. All right, that is Sea Dog's turn. Yeah. Dave, what are you doing on your turn? Now, Heath. Yeah. I know you can't attack the guy, but if you have any spells that could like attack his thorn wall or something or dispel that, I think you could still do that, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. Or you, you could attack in my direction and hit him. <laughs> No, you can't do that. <laughs> I'm gonna miss. Uh, yeah, you can't. You can't be like I'm gonna miss. Claw and hit the to the right. <laughs> well, do you have any buff spells? Do I have any what Ooh. spells? Any buffer spells? Ooh, good call. I don't have much. No. No. Something that makes us more badass, or what? What are you? <laughs> I'm a wizard. Oh, okay. You sure you don't have any but like wizarding bond? You might have haste. Do you have haste? I don't remember haste. I don't remember wizarding bond. I'm flipping through. Or zone of truth. Tell him where, ask him where the fucking thing is. I don't have zone of truth that I remember. So basically I'm looking for something that doesn't have a damage thing next to it. Right? Yeah. Or conjure. Ooh, I can reverse gravity and bring him. I can bring him down off the, out of uh, flying with a reverse. Can't gravity. do anything that harms him. Reversing gravity wouldn't bring him down. Would that it? doesn't harm him necessarily. The landing would harm him. Absolutely harms him. A charmed creature can't attack the charmer or target the charmer with harmful abilities or magical effects. I wouldn't be targeting. I, reversing gravity is gravity is being targeted. Wouldn't gravity make him fly up into the? Ether? Yeah, right, right, exactly. It would just mm. he's flying, so gravity's not really a fact. He'd just be like, oh, hop, other way around. Yeah, he well, would fly yeah. the other way. <laughs> okay, yeah. he'd be true. upside down. Fair. Do you have a summoning Heath? Oh, yeah, that's the move. Yeah, I'm going to summon yeah, a fiend. Summon. Summoning my fiend. Excellent. So we get another friend to fight with us. This is good. Nice. This is very good. Summon fiend. I'm going to go level six with it, I guess. Does that help? Not particularly. Save some spell slots because we probably got to fight some more dragons. Yeah. Four more to be exact. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Here's, here's my summon fiend. I call forth a fiendish spirit. It manifests in an unoccupied space that I can see within range. This corporeal form uses the fiendish spirit stat block. When I cast a spell, 
Choose Demon, Devil, or Yugoloth. You guys have any opinions on that? I mean, that sounds really awesome, whatever that is. Let's go with Yugoloth. What, what is, what's a Yugoloth? I feel like it's a Eastern European, it feels like. I don't know. <laughs> what? The creature resembles a fiend. Not like an Eastern European dude. It's just an Eastern European <laughs> monster. Fiend. Fiend. Yeah, like a, yeah. Like, a, like, a, like a nightclub bouncer. We all know what. <laughs> the creature resembles a fiend of the chosen type. Okay, guys and podcast listeners, I need you to Google a Yugoloth right now. Okay. Because <laughs> I'll, I'll go ahead and take it. Go ahead and take a guess. You're wrong. <laughs> I'm getting a couple of very fox? different. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting, getting a fox, fox, but also a bug. A bug and, and a, a bug. some sort of mouse thing. The internet's agreement seems to be... Oh my be God, it's a big chihuahua. Sexy fox or <laughs> bug. All right, yes. well, I, I get to pick then, right? Yeah. Okay. Sexy fox, obviously. Well, I get to pick... the w One of those I pick, it, it resembles a fiend of that chosen type, and it determines certain traits. Oh, if you go a little bit further down... <laughs> yeah, it tells us about it. It's got... It's like a bear with, uh, with, with, uh, with goat horns and the wings. It has... Super thick legs. The yeah, the sensuality, the sensuality of the legs. Just, this oh, yeah. is. I'm and, not gonna say a furry got a job at <laughs> Wizards of the Coast. I'm gonna say Wizards of the Coast <laughs> hired a furry. Oh look, here's a bear with bat wings. That's also called a Yugoloth. Yeah, bear with bat. I like wings the bear the with bat wings. Me too. I feel like the bear's not as sensual. I also like the floating eyeball who looks like he's really confused. If you're driving or whatever, as you listen to this, seriously, pull over your car and look at these sexy foxes. This is not when when someone said demon fiend. This is not what I was. Picturing. There's another <laughs> one that's a bear with horns and wings. Yeah, I think a Yugoloth yeah. is supposed to be a bear with. And then there's just a dude with dog oh, ears. Guys, can I make a recommendation? Something I just did. Turn safe search off. <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs> you will learn some things about yourself. Well, Eli's just learned some <laughs> things about himself. I think we all have. Do you guys have safe search on? Yeah, right? <laughs> Who would? I'm a grown up. <laughs> some of us teach children, Morgan. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, yeah, I'm going with you, Galath, and nice. This sex Is it a sexy bear? Bear. Okay, sexy bear. Nice. Sexy bear. Okay. I'm going with a sexy Got bear, it. Yugoloth. It's an ally that we all control. Very leggy. Mm -hmm. In combat, it shares. Is he wearing a Winnie the Pooh shirt? Yep. Sure is. Fuck nice. Absolutely yes, that. he is. Yep. All Fuck right. yeah. Interesting. And uh, it takes its turn immediately after mine. So it's the Yugo gets to go, to go next. It obeys verbal commands. No action required. If I don't issue any commands, it takes the dodge action and uses its move to avoid danger. Obviously, we're going to have it do something. All right. Is it wearing? It has charm. Also, a little pair of overalls. Its charisma is sixteen plus three, <laughs> and it absolutely is wearing overalls. But it's it's doing it with one shoulder off, like the nineties. Mm -hmm. Ooh, okay. But but it's the overalls with the little flap for the butt, right? Nice. Mm -hmm. Does a bear shit through overalls in the woods? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now now I'm picturing Angelo like furiously erasing as he starts to draw <laughs> each time at home. <laughs> You guys are not paying me enough. Oh, is that Angelo? <laughs> He's not Italian. I don't know. I don't know what Angelo's accent. I, I, you were thinking my Michelangelo. Head, I was like, <laughs> yeah, I was like, Angelo's an Italian It was either name. that or who's going to be a turtle all of a sudden. He's in Australia? <laughs> oh, they've made me redraw my sexy Yugoloth. Oh, no. My sexy Yugoloth. <laughs> Arnor! I feel like we don't say his full name enough, at, which is the opposite of helpful to him. Angelo Madrid is the cartoonist who provides the images and logos for this podcast. He's amazing. You should check out all his work. Yep. All right. You're going to have this uh, sex bear attack the dragon? <laughs> oh, yes. Hey, uh, sex bear. Yeah. <laughs> cool. We've never met. I was wondering what your voice would be. I still I still can't tell based on just, yes, I'm really excited to see how this goes. Interesting. You're very coquettish. <laughs> yeah. So, and I, as I understand it, you have pretty serious charm, charisma. See if you can charm and then, see, you know, last minute attack that dragon right there. 
Cool. So the, the the sex bear like does like a beautiful like sensual. You ever seen someone who's like really good at belly dancing and you're like, oh, I get why they because you see normal people and you're like, I don't why would anyone like this? It looks like you're getting the something's about to burst out of your sternum. And then you see someone good at it and you're like, oh, that's why this was a thing. She's doing the that. they, they, <laughs> non-binary, they are doing like a sexy dance. And the dragon, can I just say, into it. In to it. It's a good thing he's wearing like a leather jerkin. Otherwise, you'd see a big dragon boner right now. And then just as he's about to like, they do like the like claws under the chin thing and then scratch for 1d8 plus 3 damage. Wouldn't a charm break the charm of the person who is charmed? Ooh. Uh, she doesn't actually charm him. I was just doing, I was just doing flavor. Lame. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, you fucking come up with a sex bear's actions on the fly. <laughs> Morgan, <laughs> Mr. I shoot an arrow again. <laughs> Excellent. Morgan, if, if you don't kill the dragon at the end of this round, Morgan has to control the sex bear for the next round. I'm the DM, I say. 13 damage. <laughs> All right. Is that it? Uh, I would like to throw some. Uh, I can't throw fireball. Can I throw fireball? Can't necklace? do anything harmful. Can't do anything harmful. You can't do anything at all because it's not your turn anymore. The sex bear went. They go after you. That was your turn, summoning them. Does the sex bear have any bonus actions? No. Done. Snedrick, you are up. Well, you you just gave Morgan a bunch of shit for doing the same thing again. And <laughs> so now, but, but my sunbeam spell, I can continue to use for one minute. And I believe that's my action, right? If I create another beam. Is it? I think you get to do it as a bonus action. I think he said. Making it up off the top of his head. Yeah, it does not say anything about bonus action. A new line of radiance. Yeah. Yeah, so you can just do it again. Okay, yeah, so I'm just going to do it again, and he has to make a constitution saving throw of 22, and he has disadvantage. All righty. That is a 19. So he's not going to do it. All right, roll that damage. He is going to take 22 damage. 22 damage. Man, this dragon is looking Ralph. All right. Any bonus actions, anything? No, nothing. Like I said, nothing worth doing. Nice. All right. Bridget. Okay. I will tell you, this dragon is looking rough. He has 20 hit points left. That's wild that you would tell me that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so here's my thing. He's up in the air right now, isn't he? Yeah. He's not down on Earth. Right now? He's up in the air. I, like, my best thing is my fucking sword. <laughs> so, as much as I like to pretend I can dragoon leap up into the air like him. You can climb the, the thorn thing. Oh. I'll tell you this, Bridget, in the name of drama, mm. if you would like, I will let you throw your longsword a la a spear with disadvantage. With disadvantage. <laughs> disadvantage. Now, I will say you got a plus 18 to hit with that bad boy. I know, and I do have double attack, so I felt I could try it again. Um, but, I mean, I couldn't. That doesn't make any sense. Go for it. All right. I'm, you know what? Fuck it. Why not? Wait one second. I'll catch it. I'm above him and to the side. Bridget, I'll give you four rolls. Four rolls? Yeah, because you got two attacks. Okay. okay. So I will say Brant Boulderstash takes his Holy Avenger longsword, uh -huh. puts it to his shoulder. Puts it to his shoulder. Like a javelin. You have a flashback <laughs> to your grandpa's younger days before he was a champion of him winning the great javelin championship uh -huh. and being hoisted on people's shoulders and throw that javelin. Let's see how it goes. 23. Yes. That'll hit. That'll hit. Okay. That'll hit. And he's Roll undead, that damage. bitches. Okay. So that's going to do 17 plus... 10. Yes. 10. And then I can't do that again, right? I, I, you don't even need to because that, that was all that was required. You hurl that javelin using your grandfather's memories. It goes sailing 60 feet in the air, spears the aspect of the green dragon on it. He looks down and says, Hits Xerxes in the ear, but keeps going. <laughs> Hits this dragon. <laughs> it spears the green dragon. He looks down and says, You all are a lot tougher than I thought. And he falls slowly to the ground, defeated. I fly alongside him as he falls, kind of like pointing at him. 
Yeah, I mean, it's slow. <laughs> but we can't see you, so. You're invisible. Thream Bragan sends his regards or whatever. <laughs> 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 this one's for three. <laughs> <laughs> And the cops are coming. Well, and the cops are on there. They passed. They yeah. couldn't, didn't find me this time. Yeah. Puerto Rico. They're off out. to get the black dragon. <laughs> I was about to say, oh, oh you're faster on. than me. God damn it. God damn it, this game. As the young ween vigil watches our heroes vanish over the horizon, he turns and slowly makes his way down the steps of the lighthouse of time and looks over the great infinite sands of the windy desert. And then he sees it, far, far in the distance, a person, someone's emerging from the desert. A short sprint down the cliff later, he is holding her hands and helping her up. She is a girl, but seems older. And he says in the way that only children can, Wow, I didn't even know anyone was on the other side of that desert. Are you okay? Do you need help? Is there anything I can do? And she looks up at him and says, Yes, I believe there is. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2022. All rights reserved.